Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Unknown Room. This is Rory, your host from UnknownMMA.com, and I'm sitting here with Roxanne Mataferi. Roxanne, how are you? Great. Thanks for having me on your show. No problem. I love your shirt, too, also, by the way. Thank you. All right. And so everyone knows that you'll be taking on Antonina Shevchenko um, on the 20th of April in Russia. And from uh, the beginning, I just want to start by asking you a few questions from recent interviews that I've seen you uh, in the past. I've noticed that you said that you're ethically Lithuanian, and I wondered if you ever thought about representing that through your flight kits. Uh, yes, my mom's side of the family is Lithuanian, but um, my understanding is that there's not like a huge MMA following in Lithuania, and I don't really associate myself too much with Lithuania, so I'm just gonna represent America. But it's pretty cool. It's really close to the. It's really close to Russia. Nice. And then uh, also on Instagram, I've seen that um, you've been posting about pro wrestling a lot lately, and I just wanted to know, like, do you think you'll be watching WrestleMania at all, or is that just something that you do with your friends at Syndicate? I have a few friends who are pro wrestlers, and you know, I, I didn't think too highly of pro wrestling in the past, but I've watched them, and I've come to appreciate the art of choreographed violence um, <laughs> and acrobatic violence, and that's it's pretty cool. So um, I wouldn't say that like I'm a huge fan all out now, but you know, I do have a respect for it for now. It, it seems like something that you would actually transition to like pretty good. Because like you do a lot of cosplay and you have like a big character. Exactly. And... So I have dressed in my cosplay and fought MMA with my friend Serena also in cosplay. So I was kind of watching the pro wrestling matches thinking, could I do that with Serena? And the answer is pretty much no, unless I practice. <laughs> but that would be cool. Like I would have to practice with her and neither of us have the time. But yeah, I'm, I'm open to like doing some kind of exhibition match like that, you know. And also, shout out to Serena. I love her. We talk on Twitter a bunch, and she's a really nice girl. I like her a lot. Awesome. <laughs> All right, so let's get into a few um, MMA questions. My first MMA question for you, for sure, is I know like a lot of people refer to you as a pioneer in women's MMA, but is that something that you feel when you walk into the cage, or is that just um, just something that you feel like they've put on you? I used to laugh at that term because I, I know there were women who came before me, you know, like Debbie Purcell, I think Judy Neff, you know, Marlouz Kunan, a bunch of other people. But nowadays I'm starting to feel like, yeah, I'm I'm one of the few still fighting from my generation. My I call it the second generation of female fighters, you know, um, and uh, it's pretty cool. I mean, I was around for the first female UFC fight, which was my dream. Um, I was on the first season of The Ultimate Fighter with females. I was on Strike Force, um, Smack Girl in Japan, the first season of The Ultimate Fighter for 125 pounds. So I've done a lot of first things. Oh, the first woman in the Abu Dhabi, that tournament, when they first introduced women. So that's pretty cool. I can yeah. have all those things on my resume. I mean, it's really interesting, too, because like I feel like um, I actually was at one of your fights before you got into the UFC. I'm trying to remember. Exactly. Yeah, I'm trying to remember which one it was. Well, I had 42, so it's likely. <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, let's see. As what I, state? I believe it was in uh, Pennsylvania, or Jersey. Yeah, it was Ashbury oh. Park, New Jersey. Oh, Ashbury Park! Oh my yes. god. Yes, Ring That's of so Combat. <laughs> that fight was I fought Laura, uh, Laura to August in Ashbury mm -hmm. Park. Yeah. That was a rough one, but yeah. <laughs> you were at the whole fight? Yeah. 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 Um, that was one of the ones that I was at. And so you've always been like really familiar to me, which is like not seeing you on TV. Like, and you're probably going to be, I think you're on the main card. Right. Yeah, I think I, so see I just found out yesterday. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a big deal. You'd say so. Yeah. Um, now, is it weird to you? that the fights that were in the tough house count as exhibition fights. I always wanted to ask you that because you've been a pro for so long and then to go from pro to then have exhibition fights and then pro fights, it's just like a weird cycle that you don't see happen often in mixed martial arts. To be honest, that's upsetting to me because I count them as fights. Like they were legit fights. I won a lot of those in the house and to not have them go on my record, you know, ticks me off, you know, because 
people say, oh, you were on a six-fight losing streak before. It's like, well, no, actually, I was on a five-fight losing streak, but the fight to get in the house was a win, so it's a different story. Come on, you guys. I, I think have, it's... like, three elbow finishes. I have three finishes that are technically exhibition fights. Like, come on, guys. <laughs> but whatever. I just I, – I always thought that was so weird because those were yeah. – yeah, those were quality wins, and I just, it's under the UFC banner. It just doesn't know. make sense. Yeah, I, the fans do. You know. know, it's all good. And speaking of fans, I have a couple fan questions. One of, one of them is um, out of all the opponents that you've ever faced or anyone that you've trained with, who is the person that has hit you the hardest? Who is um, the hardest striker that you've ever felt? Probably in a fight would be either Vanessa Porto or Jennifer Maya. And yeah, those two. Both of those girls have some vicious mm -hmm. striking backgrounds. Yep. And then um, we have a question that says, who was your closest friend in the Tough House? And are you guys still friends to this day? Hmm. Probably Jessamine Duke and Shayna Baszler from season 18 and um, Rachel Ostevich from season 26 and uh, also Ariel Beck. She was cool. I, I brought her out to train with me for a week once. Just saying some of those girls and are, Bennett are cool. They're cool. Some of those girls are wrestling now. Just saying. I know. In case, want, in case you ever want to. Yeah. Just throw that ask there. And then this question, I think, is a good one because you've referenced it in the past. Um, which would mean more to you right now, getting your BJJ black belt or getting your first knockout victory in the UFC octagon? Oh, if you had to pick between one. Um, I want both of those very badly, you know, for... That's why it's a good question. Probably my black belt. Yeah. Um, but I know I'm not ready yet, but just the black belt would symbolize, you know, all the techniques and advancements that I would make to get to that level, you know? Um, but yeah, the knockout would be great too, because I, it would prove to the world that I don't suck at striking, which I feel like I'm always having to prove. Um, but yeah, probably the jujitsu because that's close to my heart. <laughs> I don't even like striking. I just do it. <laughs> <laughs> and that actually leads us straight into our next question. You're pretty good with these segues. So we're going to ask you a few questions about your teammates at Syndicate. And one of the questions is, which one of your teammates has the coolest array of striking techniques in their arsenal that we haven't seen displayed in the cage yet? Like who just goes crazy in training with like weird techniques and stuff that you think they couldn't pull off? Um, female wise, Jojo, Joanne Calderwood. She has really cool stuff. Um, she, I think she's done it in the cage though, but she has like front elbows, back elbows, over elbows, up elbows, back kicks, hook kicks. Yeah, stuff. she's got all those things. <laughs> Everything. Um, male wise, uh, Jordan, the Monkey King, Levy. <laughs> male training partner he like comes at you like this but he hits you and he like he has crazy stuff like i can't wait for him to get more fights in the upcoming days all right and then also who would you say is the biggest prankster in the gym and is there any pranks that you could think of that they've ever pulled off prankster um i don't think we really have any pranksters but um patrick Cornette does backflips all the time <laughs> And then and, jo and Jordan just like gets dude this guy Jordan I'm talking about he finished somebody with a in tough enough I think they called it the Kimura choke whoa which doesn't make sense but he was basically reverse triangled sitting on somebody and then Kimura them so they whoa. called it the, the Kimura triangle I don't even know it was funny but he's he has the craziest like submissions and stuff of the gym yeah that is insane. And then who would you say has the best fashion sense at Syndicate? Uh, Chris Ruffin, maybe? <laughs> yeah. I know a lot of fans were always talk about how much they love JoJo's style. Oh, yeah, her too. Oh, yeah, she has some pretty cool spats. Like yeah. Mermaid and, yeah, JoJo. 
I would say, yeah. And then is there anybody at Syndicate that's like um like the team DJ that's just always playing like weird music that usually you wouldn't listen to? Well, Patrick Coronet is actually a DJ. I think Ooh. professionally. <laughs> just he just won his last fight. Congratulations. And tough enough. Um Let's see. John usually controls the radio, the radio, which I'm glad because he likes Metallica and Rob Zombie, and I love those. Yeah. Um, AJ Matthews is the new Muay Thai coach, and he just plays love songs all morning until <laughs> May class, which, I, as much as I like love songs, I cannot fight to love songs. I cannot train to love songs. So. <laughs> um, I'm glad he has his time, and then it's over. And then John puts on some Metallica, which is great. <laughs> All right, so let's get into a little bit of the matchup now before we head out. So how do you feel about, um, it's kind of, it's not really welcoming Antonita into the UFC, but it's kind of like welcoming her into the higher level competition, I would say. How do you feel about like the matchup in general, um, where she stacks up against you? And do you feel like um, she has... Um, like a rounded skill set like do you think that we're going to see an mma match or do you think she's going to try to get you in a certain areas um man everybody in the ufc is going to be tough and i acknowledge that and i'm, I'm i know she's really tough she's really good at muay thai uh i'm really good at grappling so you can imagine that we're both going to try to do our thing you know what, what gives us the most likely win you know um but you never know. She might surprise me on the ground. I might surprise her stand up. So I'm trying to have a not. I'm trying to have a game plan, but have a loose one, you know, so that I just can react to whatever happens out there. Um, I, I kind of I'm used to fighting strikers, you know, throughout my career. That's you know, jujitsu has been my strong point. So when I was faced with like Sajara, I wasn't really used to people muscling me down because people usually don't want to take me down. So yeah. that kind of threw me off a little bit. Um, it didn't throw me off. I just, it's like, you know, big, strong. I don't know. I'm, I'm just used to fighting strikers, so I feel more comfortable with this matchup. But, um, yeah, we'll see. You never know. I think it's going to be a great bang and fight, and you guys are going to be very entertained. And I'm sure we're going to see. Surprise. <laughs> surprises. I'm sure we're going to see Roxy uh, elevate to a higher level, as you've been saying a lot lately, too. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, what color wig are you thinking about this time around? Are we finally going to see the gray? It's coming. The goal. <laughs> and then the where goal. do you think? You know it. You know it. <laughs> I do know it. Cool where me. do you think? Um, where do you think a win here takes you? Man, I don't even know. Like, I'm trying to just not think about rankings and all that. You know, it's pretty much at various people's discretion. So, um, hey, JoJo beat an unranked opponent and elevated to like seven over me so whatever i just want to win i want to fight i want to win um and i want to come back without a scratch on my face <laughs> which i mean is possible as long as that game plan you know goes to plan right so i will say good luck in your fight against antonina shevchenko Thank on you. april 20th and one last question okay this one just came in. Like, literally just came in. Okay. So, a fan has noticed that in your UFC career so far, you've gotten a UFC bonus. How did you spend it? Uh, okay. See that, baby? <laughs> That is chair. a massage chair that I've been wanting for years, and man, does it help my recovery. So I bought a massage chair, and I also bought a bunch of mutual funds with the under the advice of my father because he's a financial guy. So I invested, and I bought a massage chair, and I'm living otherwise a minimalist life. I'd say that fan is going to be pretty happy that I asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Roxanne, thank you for your time. Thank you for joining me, even through some technical difficulties. I wish so you the best of luck, and I'll be watching. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. I'd be shocked if this fight went the distance. Unknown, unknown. unknown MMA. Everything you don't know about MMA.